All right, folks, I think we're underway here. Good afternoon, all. Thank you for coming in today to hear about uh, <coughs> all the good news and maybe a little not so good news <laughs> about Medicare. Uh, can you hear me at the back? I've got fans going back here, so if I need to speak up louder, let me know. <coughs> my boss back there, my wife says, speak up louder. All right, <coughs> we'll do that. <coughs> and I just hope you. When you leave here today, you'll have a little bit of good information and maybe be a little bit less confused than you might be at this point in time. So this is, why am I here? This is Medicare open enrollment time. It started on October 15th. It lasts until December 7th. It's an annual occurrence. It gives everybody a chance to review their health plans, their health status, and decide whether or not they want to continue with the same setup they have now or perhaps switch to uh, something new that uh, offers better coverage. And by the way, if any of you are just new and coming on to Medicare, perhaps not on it yet, we have, this will help you as well. Now, I wanted to uh, make one announcement up in front because I just this is so important I don't want to forget it so it's coming right out on top there will be new Medicare cards issued in 2018 starting in April they're going to be issued over a 12 month period in segments it'll be 11 digits you'll have a new Medicare ID number that's completely separated from Social Security Nothing has changed with respect to your Social Security or Social Security number. That will be in place. But you will have a new Medicare card. Uh, they will be replacing what is being used now through Social Security on a graduated basis. So by the time you get to uh, late 2019, they will close out the system. They'll run dual for a while, dual system with what you've got now and along with the new cards. But the reason, another reason I'm mentioning this is this has created an opportunity for fraudulent folks and scammers to try to take advantage of you in this kind of a situation. These cards that are coming to you from Medicare will just come sometime between April and the following April and uh, that'll be your new card. There's nothing you have to do, nothing. And you could get phone calls from people who are claiming to, to that uh, you're gonna have to supply them with information in order for you to get your new Medicare card. And folks, this is absolutely bogus, it's not true. And I've even heard of one case recently in the greater Boston area I don't know where it was specifically, but there was a health fair set up, and some folks actually came in and set up a booth to do that, to have people give them information so that they could eventually get their Medicare cards. Again, you will get them. You need not do anything. And do not pay attention to the phone call that you get from anyone or anything in the mail in that matter, for that matter. Now, let's get on with what we're here for today. Uh, this is the SHINE overview of Medicare over, Open Enrollment. SHINE stands for Serving the Health Insurance Needs of Everyone Who Is on Medicare. We're volunteers. We're networked all over the country. We provide free and unbiased insurance information and counseling to Medicare beneficiaries of all ages. Keep in mind that we have med many Medicare beneficiaries who are disabled. They're under 65. They're still on, uh, they're on Medicare because of the fact that they're disabled folks. We try to educate beneficiaries and empower them, empower you to make informed decisions about your health insurance. As I said, we're all over the country and uh, Massachusetts alone has over 700 Shine counselors that uh, volunteer uh, their services. We are certified through an extensive 60-hour training program. We attend monthly meetings to get updated and things are always changing, retrained, and we get recertified on an annual basis. Open enrollment, oh, let me just say uh, one other thing here uh, that 
I'm sure there'll be some questions, but let's set this, I, I, I want to go through the presentation, and I'll be happy, more than happy, to take any questions you may have. What I've found in the past is I've started to entertain questions, and people are asking questions that I know I'm going to cover a little the next page over. So we'll be happy to work with your questions as we conclude this. Open enrollment is the one time a year when everyone with Medicare can review, compare, and enroll in Medicare health and drug plans. And you'll get a lot of mail uh, also from various health insurance companies all looking for your business. And I can understand and appreciate you, you can get inundated with stuff and you take it and you th throw it away. For the most part, you may. You want to peruse it and then throw it away, fine. But the key is be sure not to throw away, be sure to open any mail you get from the company that you're currently with. Do not throw that away, well, at least without looking at it, because it may be something important, might even be something that you have to sign for them. Medicare plans are required to notify you by October 1st of any changes that are contemplated for the plan you're in now that will take effect uh, in 2018. So if they, if, now it's the, the 21st, so if you haven't received 20, 24th, if you haven't received notification by now, uh, you, can, you can presume that there are no changes to your plan that will take effect on January 1. Now why is open enrollment important to all of us? Even though some of us have been on Medicare for many years, open enrollment can still be important. And the reason for that is your health needs may change from year to year. You might need more, more expensive prescription drugs, for instance. Your health or drug plan may change the costs, benefits, and drug coverage offered each year. By reviewing your plan's costs and benefits and comparing them with other options available for the upcoming year, you could potentially save money ensure that you and ensure that you receive the health care benefits and drug coverage that you need. One other important note, for all of you who have coverage right now in 2017, if you are perfectly happy with what you have after checking things out, you need do nothing further. The plans you are with will automatically continue on next year unless they're told to stop, unless you decide to change your coverage. And Shine Counselors can help you compare your plan to others or show you how you can compare your plan to others to enable you to make the, the best choice for you going forward. So what needs to be done during open enrollment? You want to review your Medicare supplemental and drug coverage options and decide which option will be best for you next year. Again, comparing plan prices, coverage, and benefits. Then you're going to decide whether to stay in your plan or go to a new one. And if you wish to go to a new one, new plan or plans, you must enroll in these new plans by December 7th. That's the final cutoff date. If you need assistance after today, you can make an appointment with a Shine Council, with myself, or there are other Shine Councils in other towns, or whatever, whatever your preference is. And as I said, I'll answer general questions to the extent you have them at the end of this presentation, and I'll hang on afterwards for brief individual questions. But obviously, if we need to get into any detail, we will need to set up an appointment to do that. Now, your Medicare coverage options, and there are options there that you need to think about. You want to decide how you want to get your coverage, and if you need a prescription drug plan, and whether or not you need to add supplemental medical coverage. Now, let me back up on that. You want to decide how you want to get your coverage. And there are two ways to do it, starting out, one is with original Medicare, that's Part A and Part B, and if you all have Medicare card, you all have Medicare numbers, well, based on Social Security, well, you have Medicare cards too, but it's the Social Security numbers. If you all have those cards, double check them and make sure that they are both Part A and Part B, because some are issued 
purposefully with just part A and not B. But as we get older, you tend to then pick up the part B. So you want to make sure you get a Medicare care card with part A and part B uh, stipulated on the cards. <clears throat> and if you do that, if you have that, you're approximately 80% covered already for catastrophic medical events. So as we all know, the other 20% doesn't come cheap at times, and that's why you seek additional coverage. But on that step one, if you've got original Medicare, then you may decide that it would be a good idea to get a, get a standalone prescription drug plan, because you need prescription drug coverage. If you go that route, there would also be the, the opportunity to get a Medigap plan to go with it. That's two separate plans, and I'll talk more about them later. The other option is to, instead of staying with original Medicare, you would go to a Medicare Advantage plan. That's an HMO. These are HMO insurance carriers that contract with Medicare to do their business. You still have Medicare card, which you need. You still have that premium that you would be paying annually. But you, if you go with a Medicare Advantage plan, it combines your health insurance coverages with your prescription drug coverage. They're all under one plan. So that's the other, other option. 70, approximately 75% of Medicare beneficiaries throughout the country take original Medicare plus, in many instances, a standalone prescription drug plan and a, a Medigap plan. Peculiarly enough, in the Northeast, it's not quite that, quite that way. Around this area, particularly in Greater Boston, uh, the majority of the people are on Medicare Advantage plans because they seem to work out pretty well for people. They're an HMO or PPO-like plan. So they're very popular still in the Northeast and in a few other areas of the country. Now, let me start to talk a little bit about the plans themselves. Medigap plans or Medicare supplement plans, they're sold by private insurers. Let me back up and say one other thing. If you go that route, Medicare is your primary insurer. The Medicare supplement plan backs up Medicare. These plans are, show, are sold by private insurance companies. Most importantly, if you take this kind of a plan, there are no network restrictions or referrals needed. Wherever Medicare is in this country, and in some instances outside the country, that's your network. Your network is a big, vast network. It's just wherever, again, wherever Medicare is. Medigap plans tend to be bought by people with a high need for utilization of medical services and or who want the most complete comprehensive coverage. There are individuals perhaps who like to travel, perhaps like to travel uh, even out of the country. They like to be able to choose a doctor or a specialist or a series of doctors and specialists that they want to see without worrying about whether or not they need a referral. The only thing they need to know is that doctor on Medicare. And I say that because most doctors take Medicare patients. That's probably close to 98 or 99%. But there are a few around who do not. So you always need to verify that. But again, this is the coverage with the least amount of restrictions. And med again, Medicare will accept your supplement plan anywhere in the country. So again, the pros for this type of plan are you can see any provider that accepts Medicare, no referrals or primary care physician is needed. You may have, you may well have a primary, primary care physician, but you don't have to have a defined one, which is the case if you have a Medicare Advantage plan. Because under the Medicare Advantage plans, the primary care physician is your quarterback. Now the Medigap plans, in Massachusetts have another significant advantage. For them, there is continuous open enrollment, meaning if you have the need to pick up 
A Medigap plan, you can do it at any time during the year, at any time during the year. The other thing in Massachusetts, they've made things a lot easier in Massachusetts with the types of plans they have. You go into most states, Medigap plans are iterated from form A to form M, N, O, or P, and each one is a little different than the previous one. All kinds of plans out there. Massachusetts reduces it right down to the basics. In Massachusetts, there are only two plans that the Division of Insurance will allow to be sold. Um, it's, one of them is the Supplement 1 plan, which I call the Cadillac plan, and the other is the core plan, which I respectfully call the Chevrolet plan. The, the major difference between the two plans is that with core, you are responsible for the first $1,316 when you go into a hospital. If you have the uh, Cadillac plan, your deductible is zero. You paid, the, you paid that up front in your premium. Your premium costs for the Cadillac plan are roughly double what they are for core. They run anywhere from 180 to 240, 250, 260. The core plan runs from 85 to uh, 150 or 160. That leads me to the, the, the next point I was going to tell you about. Again, in Massachusetts, there's only one core plan. Anybody, any carrier that wants to come in and sell it, can sell it. There's only one Cadillac plan. Any carrier that wants to come in can sell it. And the Massachusetts Insurance Department has said that if you do that, you, the carriers, can charge anything you think you can get for your product. So the prices do vary. Shine Council is never recommend specific plans. That's not what we do. We can guide you toward making a decision. With respect to these Medigap plans, I'm not recommending a plan, whether it be the core plan or the sub one, but I am recommending a carrier because one carrier is significantly lower than most of the others, and that's Blue Cross Blue Shield. Well, let me talk a little bit about the, uh, the Medicare Advantage plans at this point. This is going the other way now. Medicare Advantage uh, carriers contract with Medicare for the business. And if a lot of you folks uh, in your working careers probably had health insurance through where you worked, and they were probably an HMO or an HMO-like plan. And that's exactly what these Medicare Advantage plans are the coverage provided through private plans with networks, networks to refer you to specialists. They will have co-pays, they will have deductibles. Prescription drug coverage is usually included, and in fact, if you pick up a Medicare Advantage plan, and there are many of them out here, uh, you want to be sure and get one that includes the prescription drug coverage. There are a few Medicare Advantage plans that are being offered for special purposes that do not have the drug coverage. Medicare Advantage plans tend to attract people who are not high utilizers of medical services, at least currently as they enter these plans, and they're looking for a plan with a slightly lower premium. The Medicare Advantage premiums run the gamut from zero premium for a plan to as high as close to $200 a month premium for a Medicare Advantage plan. Very simply, it comes down to this statement. The lower the premium, the higher the deductible. The higher the premium, the lower the deductible. So you, you're going to pay one way or the other. But a Medicare Advantage plan to get the coverages you would want that would include prescription drug, they're probably going to cost you around $140, $150, $160 a month. Backing up to the Cadillac plan, the Blue Cross low price, 
Medigap plan is 191 a month. Keep in mind, again, going back, that does not include prescription drugs, so you'd have to add on a prescription drug component for perhaps $30, $40, $50 a month. So if you go the, me the Medigap route, your monthly uh, premiums might be around 250 or so, and if you go to Medicare Advantage, they're probably around 150. But again, the most comprehensive, complete hospital coverage is what is being offered by the Medigap plans. Medicare Advantage plans uh, do have a limited, very limited, some, many of the plans, limited amount of hearing and vision coverage. They're included in it. And in fact, a couple of the Medigap plans have that too, but the additional price for those coverages under the Medigap plan tends to be between $5 and $15 a month, and the coverages are very minimal that are offered under that. Now, I mentioned the Medicare Advantage plans, the HMO network. I preceded that with an overview of the Medigap plans. And remember, I said the Medigap plans do not include prescription drug coverage. So there is another component here, Medicare prescription drug coverage is part D. And if you take a Medigap plan, and you wish prescription drug coverage, you need to get a standalone prescription drug plan. The tricky part about this is we're in open enrollment. Medicare Advantage plans are subject to the open enrollment rules. If you make a decision in the next month or so to switch on your Medicare Advantage plans, it will go into effect in, 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 uh, in January. The prescription drug standalone plans, standalone prescription drug plans, are also subject to open enrollment rules. Same thing. The Medigap plans are not. You can enter into them at any point during the course of a year. So it gets a little tricky is when you want to try to mix everything together and make sure you have the appropriate prescription drug coverage in place at the right time. Now, do you need to have Part D at all? And I think the answer to that is, is yes for most folks. And in fact, if you don't pick up the prescription drug coverage in a timely fashion, then there'd be a penalty for coming into, the, into that program late. But is there anyone here that's new to Medicare or are you all on Medicare at this point? You, you are going on in a couple of months? Or? Okay, so for that, you wanna be sure that your enrollment is timely. You're not subject to the dates that I'm talking about here between October 15th and December 7th, which is for people that are just doing switches. You're in, a, in an initial enrollment period, which is a set eight month period during which you have time to enroll. Ideally, you want to get enrolled just before the month in which your 65th birthday takes place, if that's what your situation is. Some people work later than that, delay taking Part B and pick up Part B when they retire from their company at age 70 or 72 or whatever. You've got to have some form of creditable drug coverage to avoid a penalty if you're ever a late enroller. And I'll leave it at that since uh, there's, uh, we've just got the one gentleman here. Uh, I won't go into the penalty phase of this in any detail, except that uh, for this gentleman, I would say in, uh, you want to have coverage in place, even if you take no prescription drugs right now. Get a basic plan in place so you get to the ball game in the first inning. You cannot come in in the fifth inning and avoid paying a penalty, That's, which is later on. Now, just a few more comments about, about drug plans. There are several terms that are used. We call them the cost components to a drug plan. Premiums are the monthly cost, 
And incidentally, with your Medicare Advantage plans that have the prescription drug within it, the premium is embedded within that Medicare Advantage plan. If you, that example that I gave of $150, again, that that's your Medicare Advantage plan premium, and that's for your health component and for your drug component that's within it. All right, so a premium is its monthly cost. These plans have deductibles, a bench part, benchmark deductible for a drug plan is about approximately $400. Some are more, some are less. There are co-pays and co-insurance, and that's what you would typically pay at a pharmacy when you pick up your prescription. Be familiar with the term formulary. A formulary is something that every drug plan must have and must file with the state. It's the list of the medications that are covered in one, to some extent under that drug plan. Drug tiers, T-I-E-R-S, not T-E-A-R-S, but maybe we, we shed tears, but this is tier, T-I-E-R-S, is the pricing ladder for drug plans. And you have tier one drugs that might be uh, 15 to 30 bucks, and, and some plans are even zero. They run tier two, three, four, and five, and the higher the number goes, the more expensive the drug is. Your generic drugs are tier one, sometimes tier two. Your specific drugs, non-generics, are generally tier three to five. And again, a non-generic uh, specific specialized drug can cost, uh, can be a big cost. And, and insurance will help, help you to pay for that. There are restrictions in these drug plans, typically on many of the drugs as to quantity limits prior authorizations or step therapies, uh, these all go into play with what, what is prescribed to you by your, by your physician. All of these cost components can change yearly, and therefore, again, it's important to review your coverage during open enrollment. What I found is that for people to tend to review their coverages during open enrollment, probably the most, you probably got a pretty good health plan that is covering you health-wise, so at least so far as you know. I think what drives people to review things this time of year is the drug component and see what, uh, where the drug prices are going with the plan that you have. More importantly, or just as importantly, if your health situation has changed and you're picking up more drugs, then it becomes more important to do that review and make sure that you can uh, get the, uh, the, the drug plan that's best for you. And in the HMOs, it's often the embedded drug plan that drives you to the specific HMO that you're going to pick up. But having said that, I want to uh, back up to one, one thing. If you're going to, going into a plan for the first time or you're considering changing your health plan and you've got a Medicare Advantage plan and you want to stay with a Medicare Advantage plan, you have a primary care physician who's your quarterback. Not all primary care physicians take every plan that's out there. It's just impossible. There's too many of them. So if you are contemplating a change and you wish to stay with your primary care physician, by all means consult with that office and find out what plans he or she does carry. And that gets you, shrinks your universe from out here down to here. It makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to start to arrive at a decision. Beyond that, you can compare health and drug plans for next year by using an online tool from Medicare that uses your personal information to create a personalized report. It's a Medicare plan finder tool. We can help you with it. If you've got a computer at home, you can sit down and do it yourself and then talk to us or, or not if you, it, the, the results may be clear to you. But the Medicare, under the Medicare Plan Finder tool, go to medicare.gov, www.medicare.gov. It opens up to a massive home page for Medicare, as you might expect. You want to select Find Health and Drug Plans. And then you're going to enter, start to enter your Medicare information and your drugs. 
There's two ways to conduct this review. One is a generic way to do it. You just go in and start entering drugs, and it's going to give you a report. The other way to do it is to do a case-specific one. By that, go in and use your Medicare number, put your information in. Medicare has it. You're talking to them. They're just going to find the right file for you. This is legit. Put that information in. When you do that and when you start to enter your drugs, there's going to be a file number that's going to pop right up on the screen. Stop. Take your pen and paper. Write down that file number. That's your key to getting back into your file later on. Just imagine if you have 18 drugs that you're entering and you get to the 16th and your computer shorts out or you have a power failure, something happens and you lose the, what you've got. If you're doing a generic search, a general search, you've got to start all over again. If you're doing a case-specific ser search, fear not. Just put in that number and you'll pick right up where you left off. So I always recommend the specific search for, for this, particularly if you've got a number of items to, uh, to put in. Now you're saying, why am I doing this? You're going to do this going to enter it and when you're done they, they were going to tell you do you want to enter another drug no okay find me a plan and they're going to come out with a list of plans as a whole different many different ways as you could prepare this list from alphabetical to uh, 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 case sensitive to uh, uh, by category there's, there's, there's several columns you can do it by category obviously the major one that you want to get is the one that's the cost. What's the final cost going to be to me if I go with this prescription drug plan for next year based on my co-pays, my co-insurance, the monthly premium, uh, deductibles, the whole bit. You've got a tailored list of your prescriptions and they're going to give you a listing of 20 to 22 drug plans. Well, start popping up on the screen. The Drug plan number one that comes up is going to be the lowest cost one, right there. And then they'll go down and cost order and, and uh, give you what's next, so on and so forth. If you do this, word of caution, particularly, again, if you've got a number of drugs, if the first one or two plans that pop up have a significantly lower cost than three, four, five, and six, et cetera, go into that file and check it. It might be that that company's costs are lower because they're not covering one of your drugs. You just want to be sure that all your drugs are in the, uh, in the output that you get. And once you do that, you can even, there's a mechanism to en enroll right in the plan on, on, the, on that screen if you wish to. So that's a great uh, way to find your prescription drug coverage. Once you find out what plan is best for you, Backing up a step when you when you after you've entered all the drugs, I forgot to tell you one thing. You, when you if you're in a Medicare Advantage mode, then you're, you're, there'll be a box that says, "Give me the listing of drug plans that are embedded in a Medicare Advantage plan." If you are looking for standalone, there'll be another box that says, "Give me the report on the standalone plans." And that it will come up with one. You can go in it twice and get them both if you want. You just can't produce them both at the same time. So you'll have everything you need cost-wise in front of you. And that might well be the driver as to which Medicare Advantage plan you go into, if you're going that route, or which standalone drug plan you're going to, if you're going that route. And incidentally, if you have original Medicare and you opt into a standalone drug plan, you then have a choice of whether or not you wish to pick up the Medigap plan. You don't have to, but I would recommend that you not be uncovered for the health insurance part of it. The interesting thing, looking at the Medigap plans, the supplement one is the Cadillac plan, the uh, core plan is the Chevrolet plan with the first 1,316 that you pay out of pocket. You have the right, the flexibility, to pick up a core plan. Get that lower premium. If you think you're in 
pretty good health and you want to run with that for a little while. But interestingly enough, if you find down the road that you're going to be going into a hospital for scheduled surgery, knee replacement, prostate, whatever, whatever surgery you're going in for, but you're going to set a date and it's a scheduled thing and it's going to be the, sometime the next month, you can actually change and bump up to the Supplement 1 plan. Pick it up before the first of that month. Get the coverage. Stay with it long enough to complete your hospital cycles. Get back out and go back down to the core plan. For gamblers, that's not a bad approach. Now, why am I saying for gamblers? I'll tell you why I'm saying for gamblers. Because it does not help you if you've got unscheduled hospital visit. You have a heart attack. You go out and get whacked by a car. Anything that's unscheduled, if you're in the core plan, you're in the core plan. You don't have a chance to switch up and then switch back. So my suggestion is legal, but it's probably not too practical in uh, most circumstances. And if you enroll during the enrollment period in a standalone prescription drug plan, you must do it, again, prior to December 7th, that we'll pick up on, on January 1. And you may or may not enroll at this time in the Medicare plan. You might wait a month or two. I don't know why, but if you did, there's no real harm done unless you get a hospital situation in the meantime. Because the Medigap plans are not subject to the open enrollment rules. You can enroll in that at any point in time. But don't enroll in a uh, Medicare Advantage plan and then decide you want to enroll before December 7th in a standalone prescription drug plan. Because guess what? If you do that, they'll bump you right out of the Medicare Advantage plan, knock you right out of it. As of December 7th, you'll have your standalone prescription drug coverage and nothing else in place. So again, the one route is staying with original Medicare and using a standalone prescription drug and a Medigap plan or going with a Medicare Advantage plan, HMO, which has the prescription drugs embedded within it. That's your two choices. If you're in a Medicare Advantage plan, there is a time period when you can change, well, right, in open enrollment, you can change definitely to a different Medicare Advantage plan. That's what you can do between now and December 7th. You also can change to original Medicare, in other words, drop that Medicare Advantage plan, and enroll timely in a Part D, again, along with a Medicap, if you desire to. I'm just repeating what I've just told, or told you. If you have only original Medicare, you can enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan to start January 1, even if you haven't enrolled in them previously. If you're in a Part D plan standalone right now and your prescription drug needs have changed, you run the, run the uh, cost uh, situation on Medicare.gov, you can drop or switch Part D plans prior, as long as you do it prior to December seventh and it will be up and running on January 1st um, I will have some handouts afterwards that I'm going to going to give you but I'm, I'm delaying giving them additional handouts but one of the things I wanted to point out was uh, I get back up on us with the Medicare Advantage the lower price but you're going to have co-pays and deductibles and uh, uh, certain hospital outpatient costs inpatient costs, et cetera. Uh, it's an HMO. If you're in the Medicare, if you're in the Medigap plans and you have the core plan, you're responsible for the first 1,316 and nothing else. If you're in the Medigap Cadillac plan, the supplement one, you're paying that higher premium every month, you go into a hospital, you don't owe them anything for tests. You'll, I'll give you a sheet that shows that all the uh, deductibles and co-pays are zeros. You're paying a higher premium up front for that privilege. Now, if you get down the road, even in those plans, you have extensive rehab and you're in beyond a certain number of days 
costs can start to emerge. But by and large, you're going to have zero, zero costs for what you're doing. There are several assistance programs to help pay Medicare cost sharing, just to make you aware of them, I'm not going to, into them in any great detail. But Extra Help is a low-income subsidy program offered by Social Security. And if your income is below minimum requirements, you can apply for that. It's an application to Social Security to apply for extra help. In Massachusetts, there are two programs to help uh, with medical costs. The first one is called Prescription Ad Advantage. And by its name, it deals with helping you pay for your drug prescriptions. It's uh, income sensitive, but it's not asset sensitive. And people sometimes, I see people sometimes and they say, oh, I, I, I don't need prescription advantage or it's not going to help me. I, I earn too much money, have too much money in my tax form. And I'll say, well, if you don't mind, tell me how much you have. And well, I've got 45,000 bucks. That's what I was on my income last year. Well, I'll tell them that you're eligible for prescription advantage singly up into the mid 50s, 50,000 a year. If your income is under that, you can get some help. If you're a couple, anything under 78,000 a year will bring up a little bit of help. Obviously, the less income you have, the more help you can get. Prescription advantage is not a drug plan. It's a financial overlay to help you pay for the prescriptions that you're getting through your drug plan. If you're in Prescription Advantage, you get a card. Uh, if you, you key it in at the drugstore and they have it automatically on their system and you get the lower price for your drugs at that point. And I want to give you one other thing that really isn't in the program here that, that, that when we talk about prescription drugs, I want to make you all familiar to the extent that you're not. Leave aside these plans for the moment. Ignore them for the moment. You can pick up a, pres uh, there are low income prescription drug formularies at places like Walgreens, Walmart, Costco, BJ. There's no income requirements. They're not publicized. I know for instance at Walmart, you can go in and go up to the prescription counter and just ask the druggist or the technician for a copy of their low income drug formulary. There are approximately 400 drugs that are covered. The monthly price runs from probably for a 30-day supply around $8 a month. These are all generic drugs now, $8 a month. 90-day supplies are probably in the area of $18. Similar programs exist at Costco's and BJ's, and you don't have to be a member of Costco's or BJ's. You can access that drug uh, counter separately. Uh, Walgreens also has uh, a, a, a low-cost option. Unfortunately, I found with, with Walgreens, I'm sure it's a very good program, their low-cost drugs are embedded within their main formulary. There's no, no handy separate sheets that they, that they give you. But if, if you're a customer there, I would certainly explore their low-cost drug formulary. If you're paying co-pays now for your insurance, well, for your drugs, and it's, say, more than $15, or certainly if it's more than $30, see if you can just get these drugs directly off the low-cost drug formulary. You're not running them through your plan at that point. And I'm not telling you not to have a plan in place. You should have a prescription drug plan in place. But the low-cost drug formulary is just an additional option that's there for you to use. And you don't even have to be a senior. You know, 20 year old can walk in and, and get a drug off of a uh, low cost drug formulary. What you would obviously have to do is get a script from your doctor and take that script into one of these places and you're up and running. So that's the way prescription advantage works. There is a much bigger program in Massachusetts called Mass Health. And Mass Health will provide, it's a financial overlay for your health coverages. There's a lot of different programs that MassHealth offer. Uh, most of them, not all, but most of them are not only income sensitive, but asset sensitive. They're going to look at uh, their applications to be filled out for prescription advantage. There's an application 
the Mass Health, and they're going to look at all your assets as well as uh, your income. And I think I'm going to, I hope I left quite a bit of time for questions, and I'll have the handouts for you. But I think that's really covered everything that I want to cover today. And again, we can help you determine what insurance programs you might qualify for, particularly with respect to the low income. I do an income screening. So if you think you might be at, in a point where you would need that, that kind of help, we can certainly work on that. And that's not part of open enrollment. That can be done anytime. Where to, where to go for help? You've got the back pages. You've got the, uh, the phone numbers. Uh, uh, Shine at Mystic Valley Elder Services. That's who I work for. I work for the director of uh, Shine in Malden. Uh, Mystic Valley Elder Services uh, provides services to about 12 different communities in the greater Boston area. I also work for Mary Prenny, who is the director of senior uh, services here. And you can call this number. I'll make an appointment with Sherry. 664, what is it, 7600, I think it's one of the numbers. 5600. Make an appointment with Sherry uh, if you wish to see me. And you have uh, phone numbers here for other uh, uh, projects that uh, help people with uh, certain situations. Outrage pro advocacy is a legal situation. Uh, senior medical, Medicare patrol works to prevent health errors, fraud, and abuse. And uh, one way or another, we would we would be able we would be able to help you. Now, I, do any of you have questions? Because if you do, I'm going to come down so I can hear better from from uh, where I'm at. That means I'm leaving leaving the microphone here. But let me do that. <laughs> Maybe I'll all draw a fog at this point. Yes, sir. My general one is. They made this exceptionally more confusing for us than it should be? Not really. It seemed, I mean, it sounds like it's confusing, uh, particularly if it's your first exposure to it, and you're exposed to the ads, uh, TV, radio, and so forth. But when you cut right down to it, you're looking at a universe of plans out there. It's not the number of plans, it's just the, the Medigap one versus the drug and the HMO that included. It seems, seems confusing, but again, you're either going to focus on Medicare Advantage, which is going to include the drugs, or you're going to focus on <laughs> Medigap coverage, which means if you want the drug coverage, you need to get standalone drug coverage. I will tell you, and I alluded to it earlier on, yes, it's confusing the first time around, but I will tell you, that's one thing Massachusetts does right. It's a lot less confusing in Massachusetts than it is in most states, believe me. Medigap plans go on and on like this, and it's uh, very confusing. Um, but we can help you sort it out. Uh, you would want, in your case, to find out whether you want to go Medigap or Medicare Advantage. You want to find out what plans your doctor covers, particularly if it's a primary care physician that you want to stay with. That's what you want to. You want to get his universe. His universe becomes your universe, and we pick out something right, right, right from there. And, and you'll see it a little clearer. I'll give you these handouts, but I wanted to answer some questions. That will, I think the handouts will help a little bit. Another way the handouts, handouts can be a little bit confusing. One thing about the handouts, they're going to be a spreadsheet of Medicare Advantage plans. It gives you the phone numbers, and it gives you uh, costs, and deductibles, and the tier prices, and so forth. The one thing the spreadsheet does not give you, you have to do it on the computer. It's not going to help you find the right plan for you if you're taking a number of drugs right now. You've got to use it www.medicare.gov in order to come up with it. And, uh, or you can sit down and take all these 800 numbers and start calling these companies and ask each individual what you have your list of drugs in front of you. And maybe by January 31st of next year you'll be done with all this. I mean, that, that's an incredible exercise. Yes? Um, in order to Let me come over here and then I'll back up because I want to hear you and then I'll back away. Uh, the only thing I found in order to get some drugs discounted, 
you can go to your physician, even if it's a specialty, especially a specialty physician, because the drug companies give them coupons for something like, for instance, Eloquist, if you're on that, for atrial fib. Yep. And they will give you a coupon that has a list of three numbers, like coupon number, BCN number, and something else. And like Eloquist is like something like 700 a month. It's totally expensive. Wow. But they'll give you two years. Your yep. first prescription is free. And then after that, it's 10 bucks a month for two years. Right. And then by then, they'll have something else that you can. Yep. But you have to ask for it. That's you have to your doctor's office. <laughs> no, they don't always tell you. Yeah, no, they won't. That's a good point. Doctors have some coupons for some of the medicines. Uh, yeah. If you get your side of them, that reminds me there are a couple other programs in the state. Uh, private companies, one of them is Needy Meds. And uh, you can get a needy, needy Med card and they can help you. You just present that to your druggist. You don't use it in conjunction with your plan and you get a discount from them. And there's a couple other companies like that. I think I have a few with me. I hope I have some of those cards I can give them out. Uh, so you will always want to be on the lookout for that. Drug companies have very expensive plan drugs do occasionally give out scholarships and uh, you apply to them and uh, they will well, they'll furnish the drug for a limited amount of time, or maybe even more than that. I know of a couple of years ago, uh, there was a cancer drug out there for leukemia, and the cost of this drug to use it once a month was $17,000. So we worked, I worked with a social worker in Mall to make a long story, you know, hopefully with all the details, we were able to finally get through and get a scholarship from the company. So the wife was working herself to death because she was getting the coverage through her employer, but she was exhausted trying to take care of him, and she was in her late 70s and trying to work at the same time. So oftentimes there's angles, there's ways to pursue some of these, some of these things. So let me get the, uh, the flyers out, you know, and you may, that may prompt you with a, another, question, another question or two. I've got a sheet about Medicare Advantage plans. I have one about the Medigap plans. And I'll, in a moment, I'll come up with one on standalone prescription drug plans. But the other sheet that I've got here that you might be interested in seeing, you all pay a Part B premium for your Medicare coverage. And uh, it ranges from, if you're getting it deducted from your Social Security, it's probably 109 a month or thereabouts. If you're paying it directly, it's probably 134 a month. It's best to get uh, have your social have your Medicare premiums deducted from a Social Security for one simple reason: it insulates you against rising Medicare Part B costs. Social Security is going up two percent this year. We're not, again, a small increase. I've heard that it's likely, not definite yet, that Part B will go up 2%. So there goes your, <laughs> most of your money. However, if you didn't have that a couple of years ago, Part B premiums jumped like 15%, 20% one year. And those that weren't insulated with a Social Security deduction had to pay this big increase. Because you're getting your, Social, your Medicare deducted from Social Security, they cannot increase the Medicare premium by any more than they're going up with the Social Security. But what I have here is a two-sided sheet. These are all the Medicare Part B preventative services that you get. You do get a little something for your money that you're putting into the, into the program. So what we're going to do... Yeah, would you like me to pass that? Oh, okay. Sure, he's gonna, I was going to leave him, but... Okay, if you want to start, I've got one more that I'm going to get.
said, yeah, I do things the hard way. She's <laughs> getting more coal in it. She's going to have little packages for you. Yeah, let me hit this lady and then I'll get you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, prescription Advantage, does that, do they have different levels? Or mine falls in at the donor hole. Is there a different level for Prescription Advantage? Prescription Advantage is not keyed off of the donut hole per se, but if, you, if you're falling into the donut hole, then you've got some possible financial problems that the Prescription Advantage may be able to help you with. They do, but it, it, I don't get anything from them other than after I fall into the donut hole. Okay, all, it's all keyed off of what your income is and what classification you're okay, in a Prescription so they, Advantage. They, they monitor that. Yeah. Uh, when did you file for Prescription Advantage? How Oh dear. And have they followed up with you? I haven't seen anything from let's, them. Let's, let's talk about it in some detail at some point. Okay. I'll, I'll take a look at it with you. I okay. think you should. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. My question is, uh, right now we have the deduction from Social Security 104.9. Is it this only cover Part B or A? You get it, you're getting uh, your 109 deducted from your Social Security yeah. tax. That's your Part B premium. Your Part A premium, for, the, for most people, there are some unusual circumstances. Part A is, quote, quote, free. It really isn't, because you've been paying for it through your payroll tax deduction system your whole life. But Part A is then the granted to you at that point. Right, Part B is what, what it's for. Yeah, and you've got to be, uh, for this week, you've got to be in that to pick up the uh, prescription the Medicare plan. Okay, any, yes, sir. Yeah. We'll have these for you in a few minutes. Some drug plans specify the prescriptions filled. I'm sorry? Some drug plans specify yes. where you have the prescription Is that in conflict with what you talked about with the PJs? No, well, you raise a good point. Uh, all of the, all the uh, drug plans, whether they're embedded or standalones, have what is called preferred pharmacies. That means, if, and it's usually at least two, sometimes three listed. If you go to a preferred pharmacy, you get the best pricing for that drug under that plan. If you go to one that's not preferred, you're going to pay more. Drug company, the drugstore companies all make their own financial arrangements with the plans. So it's best to stick to a preferred pharmacy or check out the mail order. And years ago, it was a given that if you went mail order, it was always the cheapest way to go. That is no longer the case. 50% of the time it is, 50% it isn't. You've got to check each one out. Uh, people are gone with it, with it and they're happy with it, it's fine. Uh, each drug plan has their own mail order connector with them. The Express Scripts is one, they do a lot of the plans, not all of them, and a number of other plans as well. Okay, we have oh, here we go. We have, only have 20 of the 22 here, so let me just make sure. Okay, we're getting it. Oh, we're sure. I don't need one. Okay, I don't Jerry, need. I don't need one. There we go. That'll make it easy. So you two. You have enough. I get enough. I got. You can skip my wife. There we go. <laughs> we got it. We got it. We got it. And you two. Yeah. Right. That makes it easier than I. We'll take one. If you want, just take just take a, a quick look. At you. It's really to study it all. Uh, you're all getting this Medicare. You've got the Medicare book for 2018. Uh, I will tell you, uh, if you're familiar with the Medicare and you, 2018 books, you all get them in early October? Okay. It's, uh, it's this book right here. Everybody gets, it's on Medicare, gets that book. And the first, oh, 130 pages are generic information that goes to everybody in the country, no matter where they're living, about the different aspects of Medicare. If you go to the very back of that book, there's a section that's set up by zip code. I'm, our zip code is 01864. There's spreadsheets back there for health plans, Medicare Advantage plans, rather, and standalone drug plans. They're there. Where do 
caution, these books are finalized in late September and they don't always have 100% of the information in them. My sheets that, are, that we're handing out do. But it's still very useful information to have at the back of that Medicare and Newport. And I found a lot of people they not even, didn't realize that they were there. Um, Everybody's thinking. Everybody, everybody's absorbing everything. That's good. Or everybody's so confused you don't know what to ask. <laughs> that could be too. <laughs> yes, sir. Do the HMO plans have geographic restrictions? By and large, yes. Uh, you're, they're, they're geographic, yes, but it's more like you're linked to Leahy, or you're linked to Winchester, or you're linked yeah. to Morrow's Wakefield, and the, the doctors that serve. So if you get sick at Lot Adams, what? If you get sick at Lot Adams, you need to get a referral. Yeah. Well, no. If you're you're if you're out of the area, yeah. with the Medicare Advantage plan, and you have an emergency, you're in Florida for three months or whatever, you will get covered. You're covered by because it's an emergency situation. <laughs> You may have to do some paperwork when you get back and do a little bit of processing that you wouldn't have to do, but absolutely, there's coverage there. However, if you have the Medicare Advantage plan and you're in Florida and you need rehabilitation services afterwards, that's not covered down there. You've got to come back here to get it. And now I'm in trouble because my wife is going to ask me a question and I'm not going to be able to answer it. Uh -oh. what I will tell you that I had an emergency ride to Leahy against my better judgment. And when we got there, we had to call Tufts because I'm connected to Melrose Wakefield where that's where I wanted yeah. to go. Um, so you have to be careful with your HMO. Gen just always think, I need a referral no matter what I've done. Um, if, if it's not in your primary office. Do a referral that you'll cover your, your cost basis that way. Yeah, I think what I, I, I hear you and I, I, I recall that. And I think what we, what we get into here is uh, locally you have an emergency and you have an ambulance pickup. They're going to assess the nature of your problem and they're going to try to direct you where you think they're going to get the best treatment or the, maybe a hospital that you would otherwise go to is full up. You've got those kinds of situations. And that's just another little complication that can take place. So if you're in Florida and they, they pick you up, it doesn't matter whether it's a Tampa hospital or a little hospital and you need rock speech, you, you're going to go for emergency treatment and you will get covered. <laughs> All right, any, anything else with these uh, sheets? And if anybody wants to see me individually afterwards, I cancel all your problems, but if you have any individual questions, I'm Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>